In this video, we're going to be talking about the process of translation, which is the process of turning a mature mRNA into protein. These are the learning objectives that we're going to be covering. They're all from Unit 3.4. I wanted to start off by looking what a mature mRNA that's ready to be translated would look like in a eukaryote versus a prokaryote. So as we saw before with eukaryotes, the immature mRNA goes through some processing. So the thing closest to the 5' end will be the 5' cap. Next is the 5' untranslated region, which is a segment of RNA that is not translated into protein. It sometimes serves a regulatory function. To connect this back to transcription, in transcription, what doesn't make it to the end product are introns, and in translation, what doesn't make it to the end product are the 5' and the 3' untranslated region. Between these two is the open reading frame, which is basically what is going to be translated into protein. And at the end, the RNA molecule is protected by a poly A tail. In prokaryotes, it's much simpler. We still have the untranslated region and the open reading frame. And in the middle of that is the Scheindel Garnel sequence, which is what our RNA is going to bind to to start traveling down the mRNA to look for where to start translating. As we said before, our RNA is ribosomal RNA, and this molecule is going to bind to the mRNA and travel down it until it finds a specific sequence, which is when it can start turning the mRNA into amino acids. This sequence is an A, a U, and a G, A, U, G. And as a definition, each collection of three base pairs is called a codon. So A, U, G is a codon that codes for the amino acid methionine. So from when it recognizes the start codon, the rRNA is going to travel down the mRNA until it encounters a stop codon which is another collection of three base pairs, which is UAA or UAG or UGA. So when one of these is encountered, the rRNA dissociates from the mRNA and the protein has been completed. Let's take a more detailed look at how this happens. Imagine this rRNA has just encountered the AUG codon. For each codon, there is a corresponding anticodon, which is just the complementary base pairs of it. This anticodon is latched on to a tRNA, which is another RNA molecule that we talked about, that basically links the different codons to the amino acids they correspond to. Depending on which anticodon the tRNA corresponds to, it will have an amino acid attached to it. The amino acid that is attached to it is dictated by the genetic code or an amino acid table, which we will see later. And this attachment is mediated by an enzyme called tRNA synthetase. Since these enzymes are the ones that kind of know which codons respond to which amino acids, they are described as the translators of genetic information. So now, back to our AUG on this mRNA. The corresponding tRNA with the methionine amino acid attached to it will come into the A site of the rRNA. Here, the AUG codon will bind to its anticodon to make sure that it corresponds to it. Next, the tRNA mo will move on to the P site, and as it does so, a new tRNA will come that corresponds to the next codon after AUG. This tRNA will have a different amino acid attached to it, which corresponds to the codon that it will bind to. The binding of the first tRNA to the AUG is referred to as initiation. And this is the tRNA that will always start initiation since AUG is the only codon that can begin translation. When the tRNA corresponding to the second codon moves to the P site, the bond between methionine and the first tRNA will turn into a bond between methionine and in this case phenylalanine. 
and the TRNA that was originally carrying the methionine will move to the east site and be ejected. Another TRNA comes to replace the place of the previous one on the A site, and this process continues elongating the amino acid chain. This is referred to as elongation. Then, as the ribosome moves along, when it encounters one of the stop codons, which is UAA, UAG, or UGA, a tRNA will come which has no amino acid attached to it. This means that when it moves to the P site, there will be no bond transfer and the amino acid chain will not be able to be further elongated. So at this point, the amino acid chain is complete. This marks the end of translation and the end of the biological information flow as a whole for this gene. So now if you look at our learning objectives, we'll see that we already described the ribosome binding site in bacteria, what the start codon is, what the stop codon is, as well as the three steps in translation and tRNA synthetase enzymes. Now we will talk a bit more about which codons correspond to which amino acids and how that is dictated. So it's basically dictated by the genetic code, which is basically this table that will be given to you in any exam where they to ask you a question about it. The genetic code has some special characteristics that make it very unique. First of all, it's universal, which means that every organism on Earth uses this genetic code for protein production, which makes it very convenient to use. Second of all, it's redundant, which means that many different codons can code for one same amino acid. For example, as we can see here, if the mRNA had a UUU -U -U as a codon, I know here it says TTT, um, but since it's on RNA, this would be a U. So if it had a UUU, -U -U, that would code for phenylalanine, but then also if you had UUC, that would also code for phenylalanine. As you can see, the same applies for all amino acids except for methionine. If you look closely, each of the codons that code for one same amino acid only differ by their third base pair. This is referred to as the wobble effect, where once the first and the second base in a codon is transcribed, the third one doesn't matter that much, and often if there is variability in which one is transcribed, it will still produce the same amino acid. The third characteristic is that it's non-overlapping, which means that a single base pair can only be part of the code for one amino acid. So for example, you could not use this G in GUC to code for UCG, but also for GUC. You can only use it for one. This sort of reminds me of the concept of reading frames, since it refers to how the rRNA reads all these sequences. So clearly, they're not already bunched up in groups of three. The groups of three are dictated by where the AUG starts. So the first codon is always AUG, and after that, they're going to be in pairs of three. So that specific organization of pairs of three is going to be the reading frame for that gene. However, for example, if a single nucleotide deletion occurs because of mutation, then the reading frame would be shifted, since you would not be able to read in the same pairs of three, and everything would be shifted one over. Hence, this would result in a completely new sequence, and therefore a completely different protein. Now, if we look at our learning objectives, we already covered all the ones that are on this slide. Please note that there are some Unit 3.4 learning objectives that we have not gone over, which is the one about electron micrographs, and then two, I believe, which are about transcribing a DNA sequence into protein. There is a really useful worksheet for converting a DNA sequence all the way to protein in the Unit 2 Practice Questions folder within the student Google Drive. This marks the end of this video, so thank you so much for watching and happy studying!